best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Birch. Hey everybody, this is Birch. Let's check out uh, what's going over in DC Comics. So here's a, a question from a viewer. It says, hey Birch, something that has befuddled me since getting into comics is why, as a rule, Superman and Batman outsell action and detective comics, almost regardless of the creative team. I know your impulse might have been to say the star talent is usually on the character name titles, but there have been periods when I think it was almost indisputable that detective or action had a better creative team than Superman and Batman, and yet almost always the former outsells the latter. Even though Batman and Superman debuted in action and detective, not Batman and Superman, meaning the titles. Uh, so surely those would have the more prestigious value. Also, they have currently that historic numbering, which I've thought would work in their favor. I don't get it. Both titles are essentially the same thing, a main ongoing for each hero. What am I missing? Even when it was Tom King's waning days on Batman, he outsold the excellent and more true to the lore and more action-packed Tomasi run on Detective by at least 20,000 sales at a time, sometimes as much as 50,000 more books sometimes more, usually for gimmicks, um, not, not just kind of, you know, on the whole, but, um, but yeah, so I think there's a few things going on there. One really obvious one is that simply Superman at this point, based on how they've curated line and how they've kind of taught people about what the comics are, Superman is, uh, a, a bigger sounding name. It is, it is the name of the comic Superman, whereas action comics is, uh, it, you know, it, it's the name. You know, I want the Batman comic, I'm buying Batman, as opposed to Detective Comics. Even though, as you point out, the characters debuted there. I mean, that's part of it. Uh, the other thing is that the comic, and I think this has led to why that's true, is that the publisher, DC, has often promoted Superman and Batman more. It gets more of the marketing dollars, it gets more of, you know, the, uh, the big hype when a creative team is on the book, as opposed to Detective or Action. Now, I agree with you, by the way. I think there have been better creative teams who are more critically acclaimed and everything else, but uh, the publisher often promotes those two books first. And I think it's, this is where it's like a, it's a loop. It's a snake eating its own tail. They do that because they believe it's easier to market something called Batman than something called Detective Comics. It's just, it's like, it's easier in the name. They're like, well, people are going to come in, they're going to buy Batman. And so this, they, therefore, they put more of their marketing dollars there. They put more of the the hype around the teams there. And there have been many moments in the past where the team that they hype up, like you say, is not as strong or, or as, uh, as good as the team on the other title, but they do it anyway. And then because they do it that way, it kind of trickles down. So then the retailers go, yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I should probably carry more Batman and more Superman because if, uh, you know, if somebody walks into the store who isn't really a comic collector, they're going to reach for Batman. They're not going to reach for Detective Comics because they will recognize Batman. So therefore, I should just order a little bit more. And so you just you take all these things and you multiply them up over time and you get the effect you're talking about. Whereas you know, Batman and Superman just do better in the store. Uh, does it matter? So I, I mean, no offense to your question, but ultimately at the end of the day, uh, what DC should be looking at is to say, how do we get all these books up? They shouldn't necessarily be thinking, you know, how does one title outsell another? They should be thinking, how do I get all these titles up to a, you know, a, a big point? And ideally, if they were a really smart and clever publisher, what they'd be doing is they'd get a creative team, get somebody hooked on, say, Superman, and then they would bring up, you know, let that, that run or whatever, that 12 issues, if you're thinking that long, play out. About four or five issues in, they would bring on a really strong creative team on action, and they would start hyping that and decrease the hype on Superman, and they would do that with the hope that you'd get a customer buying both, that you'd, you'd basically get two runs in parallel with two creative teams so you could get kind of that double effect. That would be the, the smart marketing way to do it. Uh, I don't think that would be that hard to do, but you know, if you're thinking in short terms, and they are, where you know the you don't really believe you have the customer for longer than two to three issues at a time, then you're kind of forever in that state where you're going to just market Batman, market Superman. I, I don't know. Um, there is some history there, but the, the challenge is, I think you, you brought up the point about the legacy numbering helping. I, I don't, I don't think it hurts. You know, I'm, I'm not of the opinion that 
you know, the, having comics that are up in the thousands is a negative. I don't think there are comic readers. And again, from, from being in the shop, watching people come in, I never, I didn't get people who are new to comics coming in going, well, I'd love to pick up Superman, but it's on issue 900. And so I, I don't even know where to begin. I, it's too much for me, too intimidating. I never heard that in real life. Now, a lot of people inside the publisher believe that that's the case, and they would frequently uh, say so, that they believe that, that this effect was happening. Uh, but there's no real evidence. I, again, I, I've talked to lots of retailers over time. That wasn't ever a, a thing that happened. You know, I, I can't, I, Occasionally, you'd run into somebody who would bring that up as an issue. But, I mean, it was, it was incredibly, incredibly rare. Never happened to me. I've heard other retailers claim it happened to them, but, I, I, you know, not a factor. Uh, but I, at the same time, I don't think the high numbers help either. I don't think people come in going, wow, this comic made it to 1,000, so I, I definitely need to start buying. It's, it's because people who are coming in new to comics, they kind of all assume that the comics have been going on forever anyway. When they see low numbers, it's actually in some cases more surprising. It's like, well, what happened? what happened here? Like, why is this comic only on issue 20? Did it? It's Hawkman. I, I know, I, I remember Hawkman from when I was a kid, so I don't understand. Why is this comic at number 20? It's more confusing to them than anything else. And that's that's more or less how they look at it. But they what they don't do is go, uh, they don't put a value on the comic uh, for being a high number. I, I don't know. I, I think it's it's as simple as that. It's just the, the brand recognition of just having the name right out front and center. That's what's driving people to uh, to the table. That's what's causing them to do it. It really is uh, nothing more elaborate than that. Uh, you know, is it a problem worth solving? Eh, it's, I, I don't know. I, I mean, quite frankly, I think there are probably bigger issues that the, the company has to deal with than, than that. Um, I think the, the bigger problem you've got right now is just the overall brand confusion. Uh, you know, Superman is Superman, son of, you know, Kal-El, Superboy, and that's the John Kent comic. You've got action comics over there uh, going on on War World in a completely different uh, different mode. You've got Green Lantern doing its thing. You've got Flash. I mean, you've got, I think, a very confusing current slate of DC Comics. And when you think about Warner Media and the sale discovery, and if it's true, they're going to come in and want to do bread and butter type stuff and make the characters... Uh, you know, reflect very plainly what they get in the movies and everything else. If that's really the direction that they're going to go with it, and it certainly seems so when they cancel things like Aquaman, and at least one of the statements that had come out is like, I, why we, you know, we have trouble getting one Aquaman to sell, and they're talking about the movies or just kind of pop culture. Uh, why why are we trying to confuse people with two Aquaman? Is this his son? It's, it's not his son. Hang on, this is the son of his enemy, and you're calling him Aquaman, and Wait, you're, one of them's featured in Pride. Is that wait? Is that why you did it? Is like, these are kind of questions people come up with. They don't understand. And whenever you get confusion in general with a comic, people tend not to buy. That's one of the, you know, the, the things that I've, I've heard from other editors. Like, well, when readers are confused, they want to pick up that comic and read and read, find out what's going on. They want to clear up that confusion. But quite frankly, the uh, the most often result is the opposite. When there's confusion, uh, people don't buy. When people do not understand what the what what it is it that you're doing as a company, they tend to back away. They're like, okay, I I'll uh, uh, too complicated. It's it it's weird because the publishers are convinced that the high numbering in some cases drives people away, but the high numbering is not really a factor. What is a factor is you know, if you've got people thoroughly not understanding what it is you're doing with your lineup, that's the stuff that tends to drive people out. And that's that's where DC's everything matters kind of omniverse approach was probably a bad idea because it just reinforced that confusion to everyone. But anyway, that's my opinion. Curious, what do you guys think? Is there another hidden reason that I forgot as to why Batman and Superman outsell Detective Comics in action? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.